But yeah, the whole initiative of taking charge, controlling my life, not letting social norms dictate what I should and should not be doing, but knowing the truth and abiding by it, that includes my wellness. So just because there's all these distractions of, you know, TV, movies, your phone, games, all these things are distractions. Of course, there's a means of good with them, but more often than not, it's used as distractions. And uh, you can't get anywhere with life with those things in your way. Of course, if you utilize them properly, you benefit others. And that was the point. For example, recently with the budget cut with PBS, like that is like a huge slap to the face. Like, why do we have TV in the first place? It was to help with education, to better society, to, to inform people. But instead, more used for entertainment. And again, distractions and sometimes shameful things. Not good. Not good at all. But the reason why, again, I brought that up is because, like, for example, working out is something I love to do. It's something that clears my head, helps me focus, and at the same time, I'm accomplishing to take care of my body, make sure that I'm in shape. I mean, last night, it was amazing. Like, I felt so happy what I found out. Also, another thing happened last night, which carries over to today, which I will tell you later, but you never know what's gonna happen in your life that will change your direction that you thought you were going down. It's really important that you have a goal, that you look forward to doing something and keep after it. At the same time, don't do something to be in spite of others and their opinions and what they think. I mean, that's not the way to live. You have to be smart about it, you know? I'm at that point in my life where I'm still trying to figure things out for the most part. I mean, I have a goal of what I want to do, where I want to be. But, I mean, I have a plan, but ultimately Allah has a plan. God has a plan for every one of us. However, this is where it can get a little confusing. We have free will to choose what we want, but ultimately it's God's will that He allows for some things to happen or not. Right? Now this can go into a big debate of if we have free will, then how come, you know, it's... it's Dude, I mean, it's, it's God's will. It's what He wants. Well, yeah, I mean, you have the choice to do what you want. And that choice is whether God allows it or not to happen. That's what it is. Yesterday, I think, I watched a video. Uh, it was Gary V with uh, Tony Robbins in a kind of older video. Not that old. It was earlier this year. Great discussion. They were talking about so many different points. It was about... 40 minutes long the video but it was totally worth it to sit and watch the whole thing because you have two business geniuses who talk about their successes and the the understanding of the system and it was just incredible the knowledge that they they spilled out but one of the key things that they kept emphasizing is to be grateful to be happy with what you got to not complain to be thankful about everything that you have, everything that you want to do, like your goals, like everything is just so amazing, you know? Like they they kept emphasizing that, that in order to be successful, you have to be grateful. So it's kind of like, you know, two elevation statuses. In order to be successful, you have to be grateful, which has this weird connotation of being weak, if you're humble, which is not true. You can be confident, but you can still be humble about it, right? It's very, very thin lines, and when it goes back to is just your intention. Why are you doing what you want to do? What's your motive? What's your purpose? All these things have to be answered by yourself, right? And it comes with humility. You have to be vulnerable to answer these questions honestly and truthfully and you have to work towards that i hope all this is making sense not just to you but to myself as well how long i've been riding for now I've only been 15 minutes <laughs> still got another 15 to go see before i would ride over there through the flowers and see the blue bonnets because it's springtime yo it like came all of a sudden too it wasn't like it was like an overnight thing it just became hot and warm it's nice though. I love it. This guy did not park right. He's up on the curb. Ooh. You got me in chains. You 
You got me in chains for your love But I wouldn't change But I wouldn't change this love There are some courteous people in this world Just gotta find them But they're the ones who should be on TV Not fools Oh, there's a hill. You turn time. Whee. This part's easier because it's going down. I know I'm just like talking about random stuff, but these are just some of the thoughts that I have and I just want to share them with you guys so y'all could, for those who don't know me, could understand me a little bit more. Those who do know me know I'm this kind of little random. I just have all these random things that just pop into my mind. And here's another thing I want to talk about. I've noticed Ever since I came from Comic-Con, my love for Star Wars kind of reignited. My geekiness is coming back, you know. I don't know why, but I've been, not binge watching, but almost every day for the past week, I've been watching an episode of Star Wars. Starting with, of course, episode four, because that's the original. That's where it started, and that's what makes the story more epic. If you start from there, and then go to six, and then go... To one and then go to three that's why number three is my favorite because you know what happens you see how things are just unfolding two is my least it's not even a favorite I just it's important because you see the events that happen to Anakin that make him go to the dark side or at least lead him to that but I just didn't like it it just kind of dragged some parts you know so yeah, I mean, I've actually changed the wallpaper on my desktop. My favorite character is Darth Vader, right? Not necessarily Anakin Skywalker, but Darth Vader. Because that's the whole saga. That's what the saga is about. It's about Darth Vader. It's not about Luke. I mean, Luke is part of it, but it's always been about Vader. And that's what I love about the story. Right, and how, how rich and deep the story is, and how relevant it is, right? I mean, Star Wars in itself, I mean, why is it such a big franchise? Because it hits so many social points, right? It, uh, you know, dealing with corruption and political, in politics, and business, and society, it tackles it head on. And the, the idea of good versus evil, and there's actually, believe it or not, a lot of attribution to Islam through Star Wars. I mean, the way the Jedi wear their clothes, um, the concepts, the principles, the morals are all actually driven from Islamic principles and values, which nobody wants to attribute to because people want to make Islam look like a bad guy. And freaking Trump said it himself, Islam hates us. Islam is not a person. Idiot. I mean, I could keep ranting about you know, like Islam being the the bad guy in today's society, and that's because people work so hard to demonize it for so many like years. Right? I'm talking about like decades. Right? And like, I mean, it. it all this has happened over, I would say, in the last, I'm guesstimating, 100 years. Maybe even more than that, to be honest. But just taking the concept of God out of the equation, right, in society. That don't attribute anything to God. God is the bad guy. God is the reason why things didn't work out for your favor. And that's because the idea of choice and... Uh, desire, you should pursue your desire, your dreams, even if it's morally wrong, to just go for it, right? No one's going to judge you, no one's going to say anything, no one should say anything because it's your choice. That idea has been pushed, and the only way they could make that agenda happen is because of the greediness that they know that if they have corruption on earth they keep corruption on earth it's going to cost a lot of money to try to fix it and that's what it's always been about it's always been about money nothing else i mean it's kind of in a funny context 
But remember, if y'all remember in Rush Hour 2, Chris Tucker, his character says, you know, whenever there's something going down, always, always follow the rich white man. Not to put it on race or anything, but it's the money. Always follow the money. Then you'll know exactly what's going on. Also, that's been alluded to with uh, the movie The President's Men, right? The behind the scenes story of how uh, Watergate was conducted with Nixon. It was just following the money. That's all it was. Just following the money. When you have people who are just in pure uh, seek, who are just pure seekers of the truth. It always, I mean, in my, in my theory, it's always been about money. It's nothing else. So, if you want to know what's going on with the world, follow the money. Uh, almost done here. Again, I just get all these random weird thoughts. Because it's all relevant. It's all connected. I mean, when, when you want to take God out of the, I mean, again, it's just been progressing, right? I'm not trying to hate on the Christian faith or anything like that because they are from the people of the book. In our religion, right? They are Ahl Kitab, also the Yahud, which is which are the Jews, because they believe in the core same things. That's why we're more in common than you know different. But people want to make they want to really focus on the differences, which is not how it's supposed to be. Just as an example, the progression of Christianity. Okay, first it was taking Isa Jesus, the son of Mary as the son of god which is where we differ right big time and then over the next hundred years several hundred years it's okay jesus died for your sin so you can do whatever you want and not suffer the consequences it's like okay fine so we can sin ask for forgiveness from jesus and then he'll save us Right? We won't go to hell. And then after that, do what you want. That's what the idea has been preached as. Do what you want. No no suffering, no nothing. Just have a good time. It's like, okay, we'll do that. Because remember, Jesus died for our sins. Okay? And then after that, then like the real big push, and I'm going to get a lot of hate from this if this ever goes viral, but homosexuality was a big push into allowing corruption go into the earth. That, oh, it's not natural. Why is it not natural? These are my desires, these are my feelings. I wanna do this. Well, it's not natural because God didn't create us that way. We're not like that. Oh, then it's God's fault. And that has been pushed and pushed and pushed for so many years, since like the, the, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, like, it, in American history, it's just been pushed that agenda. And because of that, now we're in society where we become hyper sensitive to not offend anybody of anything because we're gonna hurt someone's feelings, right? But if it's not for truth, if you're not standing for truth and standing for divine law, that's when that's when things go south. And the thing is it's been manipulated so that we are not in a position of power. Although there are plenty of tools to put us in a position of leadership. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever, gives us authority to have the opportunities to preach the truth, to tell the truth, regardless of the consequences. See, that's the thing. Nobody wants to suffer the consequences because they don't want responsibility. That's the problem. Nobody wants responsibility. They want to avoid it. It's not my concern. Why should I have to do anything about it? You are responsible because you knew the truth, but you stayed silent on whatever issue it was, as long as it was with the truth. These things can really get me fired up sometimes. But truth is truth, whether you like it or not. And that's the thing, is like, we as a creation of Allah, of God, should not have a say in that. Should not be upset with God. I mean, you cannot, you should not even consider the thought of being upset with God because things are not going your way. As a slave to God, because you are a slave of God, then 
you have to submit to his will and you have to be content with what he wills.